if you handle yourself and protect yourself and a little, little bit tough, you'll be, you'll be okay, you know. Um, you just got to learn to just take it and, and, and give it right back, you know. If, if they see you're weak, if, they, if, you, if, you, if you take it and take it and take it and take it and don't give nothing back, then you're just going to get eaten alive and you'll, you'll step all over you, you know. But if you, um, you know, just learn to, learn to take and give, you know, and um, um, then you think if you guys ever get an opportunity to go there, you'll be okay. Just try just, just remember that, you know. Um, I remember Ricky Steamboat told us one time, he said, he had, a, he had a thing in his head. He was, you know, obviously one of the best baby faces of all time. He had a thing in his head. He said he would count. When God was giving heat to him, he would count three moves. He would give him three moves only before he struck back. So he's getting heat, right? The guy gives him an elbow. Boom. Okay, there's one. Then he gave him a four. Okay, there's two. You got to cut back. There's three. Okay, bam, bam. Chop back. But he'd always, he'd always, he never let the guy do more than three. So I, I kind of I tend to take that. I take that with me when I go to Japan. And I kind of count in my head and have a little mental clock, you know. So, okay, I know it's his time. It's his heat. You know, this, this is his time. You know, I understand that. But it's not, I'm not going to get, I'm always going to have a you know, fighting chance, you know, try to fight from under and have that fighting spirit, that fire that you talk about. So maybe that could be something you guys can take, you know. Don't let anybody get, like, more than, because when you see a guy do, like, five, six, seven, eight things in a row, you're kind of like, oh, okay, well, when's the guy going to come back? And I know what's next, you know. So... I just kind of took that philosophy over there, and that kind of helped me out a lot. So, what's the training like in Japan compared to what's like here? It's a lot more. Um, it's it's more strict and more uh, consistent. Like for example, the squats and push-ups that we did, those guys are doing that every day before the match. I mean, that's before the match even starts, along with the rolls and then the bumps and stuff like that. So they probably do the young boys over there. They probably do about. I'm lucky because I, not, I'm not because I'm a foreigner. I don't they, don't. they don't make me do it. I don't have to. Sometimes I go in there, I jump in, um, when, you know, when I can. But those guys are doing that. What we did, those guys are doing that. Then you go back. You have like an hour for the show, and then you have your match. So what, what what we did, you know, what we did today was just what those guys do like a daily basis. You know, so um, they and they do it for years and years and years and years. And they, you know, those the young boys in Japan, they're. <laughs> They're bad dudes, they're tough dudes, and they, they, they do that for years before they even get up, you know, opening card or mid-card status, you know, so if they, ever, if they ever make it past that, you know, so, I mean, they live it in a dojo, and they just live, breathe, eat, sleep, wrestling just 24-7, man, you know, so if they're not training, they're lifting, if they're not lifting, they're, um, you know, cleaning the dojo or cooking food or, or, you know, getting ready for the next tour or getting, you know, Cleaning their gear, or just it's just nonstop wrestling, man. Um, <coughs> what's the what's the travel? I mean, how's the travel schedule? How strenuous is the travel schedule at, for in WWE? Um, you like a new city, like every other day. Yeah, it was pretty. It's, when when you make it on the road, um, when you make it to the road, it's like I think if you're on Raw, you leave on a you leave on a depending if you have a house show the day before, you leave on a Saturday, and you have. Um, day of travel and you do raw, then you have, either have one house show or two house shows. So you live like on a Saturday and you come back on like a Wednesday or Thursday, like every week, you know. <laughs> so it's pretty much you're on the road like 200, 250 days a year, you know. So something you guys got to think about if that's your goal, you know. If your goal is, I, I heard TNA schedules a lot differently because the way they film TV, they, they film two episodes a week, so you're able to go home a week. Um, but as far as like, Japan, it's like you're usually away from home, anywhere from 15 to 20 days a month. And you come home, and the time you get home and over the jet lag, it's time to leave again. But um, and as far as Mexico, I believe they want you to actually live down there. They don't, they don't like flying guys back and forth. So those are all things, as far as I'm concerned, uh, those are four realistic and obtainable. And it should be your guys' goals. Hopefully your goal, goals are to get go broaden your horizons and, and get off of the Indies, you know. Um, so there's like Mexico, there's Japan, there's WWE, there's TNA. So that just gives you a little taste. And WWE's really, really crazy. It's like 200, 250 days a year. TNA's a little bit lighter. Mexico, I believe you gotta move there. Puerto Rico, I believe they want you to move there. And Japan is like, if you're, if you're fortunate enough, like I am to be able to flip, be flown back and forth. They actually, they actually want you to live there too in the dojo to save them on, you know, because it costs like $2,000 to a round trip ticket to Tokyo, you know, so. Um, and if you do in Japan, it's like 15, 10, 12, 20 days a month. So if you, this is what you want to do, this is what you love, this is your passion, you gotta, it's one thing you got to be 
uh, prepared to deal with in the future, you know, is the travel and being away from home. You know, it sucks, but it's just, it's part of it, you know. How long, how long did you train before you got in the ring? Um, yeah, like I was saying before, when I went to, uh, I started off doing Lucha and uh, they wouldn't even let me get in the ring for about five months, almost six months I was just out here just doing squats and push-ups and all the calisthenics and jumps and, and just all sorts of lockups and stuff down here before they even let me get inside the ring, you know. And then it, when I got inside the ring, it was another like three months before I was able to even like do any kind of like cool like wrestling moves that were just all just rolls and bumps and rolls and bumps. So that's why you guys today, you got to take advantage of the way the business has kind of changed because um, now I got, nowadays guys are able to just take a crash course real quick on how to take a bump or how to do a roll and they can get a match in like a month it seems like or even less than that you know it's just anybody it just seems like any kid can just get a ring and get a federation get three letters call it something and then just get a bunch of clowns in there and, and wrestle around you know but um you guys get to just try to try to respect it more and uh train more so you don't you don't you don't disrespect the business or disrespect yourself you know so make sure you're properly trained and and um because I know that I, I'm, I'm hard on, on, I have a couple of young guys that I teach and I have a, and, and you know, you guys that came, that came here, you know, so I try to be a little bit harder, a little bit tough on you guys because I had it hard and I had it tough and that's how I was broken. So I try to pass that down a little bit, you know, because um, I'm not going to lie to you, when I see guys on the independence when I go to shows and it's just like, they don't shake your hand when they see you, they're just effing around, they're not serious, they don't take it serious, they're just they're breaking kayfabe, they're talking to the, they're, they do a match and they go sit in the audience, they don't, they don't care about the business, they don't care about protecting the business, and, and they just go to show they were never properly trained, you know, and it just, it's a reflection of, you know, it's kind of like a kid and his parents, you know, if you have a good, polite kid, you can say, oh, he had a good parent, you know, same thing with the wrestling school, if you see a guy that shakes your hand, he's respectful, he doesn't, he's not out bragging and talking, he's not the most, he's not the loudest guy in the locker room, you know, and he's working hard and he's, you know, keeping kayfabe, you know, you can tell that guy must have came from a good school, he must have a good teacher, you know, good instructor, you know. So um, that's why I kind of like try to impart to you guys and try to teach you guys and try to pass it down so you guys can kind of respect the business as well. And, and um, paying your dues is like, it's, has, it's kind of a thing in the past where, you know, you never hear guys no more like, oh, I had to train two years before I got my first match. They never, you're not going to hear that no more. Guys are just getting their first match after like a month. So you guys are really, really lucky. So, um, and like I said, if that's if that's the case, you, you're able to find work out there and the, and the promoters don't care if you're properly trained or ready for a match. They just want to fill up the car. They just want to get 15 names and they want to pay 25 bucks for matches one through five. And if that's the promoter's goal and you're lucky enough to get on that card, you know, just Keep it basic, keep it simple, don't try to do anything you're not, you can't do or haven't tried or haven't done.